Hello everyone, today we're moving on to isomerism again. Now, today we are only focusing on the theoretical aspect, no calculation, no problem solving. The next video we are going to solve either two or three videos more, which will be purely problem solving on isomerism. So, but we need to understand the concept of isomerism in the full detail form. There are concepts that we need to understand before moving on to problem solving. So you can follow us at myquizy.com and uh, you can also follow us at um, start on Facebook on Malik Shamel or on YouTube Shamel uh, Online Teaching so you can get our full details so we move on with isomerism okay now we have to understand the word iso the word iso always means the same so we have to understand the same thing goes with the word isotopes. When we talk about isotopes, element with the same atomic number but different in their mass numbers. For example, we discuss about chlorine. We said chlorine always contains 17 atomic number and it has 35 and 37 mass numbers. So they are the same molecule at the mass numbers atomic numbers but different in their mass numbers so when we have the word isomerism we have to understand that these are compound with the same molecular formula but they are always defined in their structural form or we mostly use in the special orientation of the atoms now I gave you guys here let's say we have five balls with different colors we also have here five balls with different colors but the colors of these balls in this first part are similar to the color of the balls on this other part so it means they have the same colors but their orientation and arrangement are different if you look at this ball here it's in the form of a tetrahedral shape whilst if you look at this one it's in the form of a linear shape so it means they have the same number of balls but they are different in orientation is different so the same thing goes when we talk about isomers, this element with the same molecular formula, but they are always different in the arrangement. So let's move on to the types. We have generally we have two types of isomers. We have structural isomers and we have stereo isomers. So we have to understand the word structure. So just use the idea that we talk about molecular form this are element with the same molecular formula but different in their connectivity or we said in their arrangements. In some books they will tell you we have five structural isomerism but in general sense we have only three. In a sense we have chain isomerism, we have position isomerism and we have functional group isomerism. Now we'll talk about position chain isomerism. This is molecules having the same molecular formula but different in the arrangement of carbon skeleton especially in the branch of the carbon chains in the sense let's say we are given butane and we are given two methyl propane if you look the carbon of the butane is four and the carbon for the hydrogen and the hydrogen we have we have ten while two methyl propane we have four carbon and we have ten hydrogen but if you look at the arrangement here the structural arrangement as different if you check keenly, you observe that the butane is in the linear form, whilst the methyl propane is not in the uh, linear form. It is, if you look here, the CH3 here is attached at carbon 2. Next example, let's say we are given pentane and we are given 2 methyl butane. The same thing goes, the molecular formula are the same. There are 5 carbon and 12 hydrogen, but the arrangements are different. If you look here, this one is in the linear form, while this one is not in the linear form. Now, the same thing goes again if we are given hexane and we are given 2 methyl pentane. The same thing goes if you check at this one, it's in the linear form, while this one, if you check at carbon 2, we have a substituent here. Okay. Now, the same thing goes again between octane and 2 3 dimethyl hexane. If you check, we have 8 carbon and we have 18 hydrogen. The molecular family are the same, but if you look at this one, it has no substituent, while this one, it has two substituents. 
we have substituent at carbon 2 and we have substituent at carbon 3. Now, next time we move on to position isomerism. Now, most times people misunderstand the difference between position isomerism and functional group isomerism. There is a similarity, but there is a difference. In the sense, when we talk about position isomerism, it's the changes in position of either functional group or the substituent. Now, not position isomerism is also talking about functional group, whilst functional group isomerism is also discussing about functional group. But in the sense, the common difference between them is that when we talk about position isomerism in terms of functional group, we are talking about the single functional group in a different carbon position. Whilst the functional group isomerism, when one we have the same molecular formula but different in their functional group. Now let's move, uh, try to understand position isomerism. Let's say we are given one butene and we are given two butene. If you look here, we have the same molecular formula, four carbon and eight hydrogen, but there is a difference. Now, if you look here at carbon one, we have the alkene. Remember, we said an alkene is always giving us the carbon double bond carbon. Whilst this one at carbon one, we have the alkene functional group. Whilst here at carbon two, we have the alkene functional group. Now, next example, let's say we are giving propanol and two propanol. Now, if you look again, the functional, this molecular formula is the same. We have the C3H8O. Yeah, again, we have C3H8O. But if you look here, the alcohol is different. If you look here, the OH is found at carbon 1, whilst here, the OH is found at carbon 2. So there is a big difference between them based on the position of the functional group. Now, another example, let's say we are given. So we say if we are given 1 to dichloroethane and we are given 1 1 dichloroethane. If you check again, we have 2 atom of carbon, 4 atom of hydrogen, and we have 2 atom of chlorine. Now, in this one, we are having an alkyl ally, but let's forget about alkyl ally functional group. Let's think about the substituent. Now, if you look at the substituent here, the two chlorine are found at carbon 1. Whilst here, the two chlorine, they are not on the same carbon. This chlorine is at carbon 1, while this other chlorine is at carbon 2. Okay, now move on to functional group isomerism. When we talk about functional group isomerism, as I discussed earlier, is that when the functional group are different, Note there is a difference between positional isomerism and functional group isomerism. Okay, now when we talk about functional group isomerism, the functional group will be changing. In the sense, if you look at this one, we are giving butanol, we have an aldehyde functional group here, and in this one, we are giving ketone, we have a ketone functional group here because we have two R separated by a carbonyl group. So, in this one, if you look here, they have the same molecular formula, but the functional group at the front. Now, let's say we are giving ethanol and dimethyl ether. Now, if you check here again, ethanol, we have the OH here, whilst here we have ether. Remember, we said OH always represent an alcohol functional group, whilst when we have two alkyl groups separated by oxygen, it means there is an ether. Now, let's say again we are giving propanoic acid and methyl acetate. It means we have an oic acid here, carboxylic functional present, and we have an ester that is always present. Now, if you look here again, they have the same molecular formula, but there is a difference in their structure, in their functional group. Here, if you look, we have the, the functional group here, which is a propanoic acid, whilst here again, the same thing goes, we have an ester here. Now, stereoisomers. Now, there is another video which I have to explain the details about stereochemistry that will explain briefly about this one, a dip in this one. For the, today, we are only moving on to basics. Now, stereoisomers have the same molecular formula and the same connectivity of atom, but different in the spatial of their atoms. Type of stereoisomers, we have two. We have the dramatic isomerism and we have the optical isomerism. 
The Dramatical Ice Magazine, we also call it the Cis Trans Ice Magazine, whilst the Optical Ice Magazine, we can also call it the Enantomers. Now let's move on to Geometrical Ice Magazine. When we talk about Geometrical Ice Magazine, we talk about the Cis and the Trans. Remember, Geometrical Ice Magazine always occur when it has a double bond, an alkene functional group. If the compound contains an other functional group which is not alkene, then it is not a geometric isomerism. Not the point, it must always be an alkene, it must always contain a double bond in the form of a rotation. So when we talk with us the word cis means the same, trans means different. In the sense, if you look here, we have A, we have the functional group, the double bond, and we have B. If you look, the A are on the upper part, while the B are on the lower part, so we call that one cis. A are the A at the up, while this other A is down, while this B is up, while this one is down, we call it trans. So, not the point, that's why we are giving boot in and we are giving trans to boot in. If you look here again, the CH3 and the CH3, they are on the same plane, whilst the hydrogen and this hydrogen are on the same plane, so we call it cis2 boot in, while here again, if you look, the CH3 is here, the CH3 is down and this one is up, so we call it trans. Okay. Now the same thing goes here again, if you check the chlorine is up, here is chlorine is down, here again the chlorine, they are on the same plane, hydrogen on the same plane, so we call this one cis, and this one we call them trans. Now this one again, we have cis 1,2 dimethyl cyclopropene, here we have 1,2 dimethyl cyclopropene. Now not the point, when we have dash bond, it means we are looking the object, the, the compounds towards or uh, sorry, at the back. Okay. When we have uh, the, 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 the 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 without the dash bond, it means we are looking at the compound. So not if you look at this one, here we have a dash bond, as a, a wedge bond, and here we have a, a, a wedge bond, and here we have the dash bond. If you look, they are on the same path. This is a wedge, while this one is a dash. It means they are different, so we call it trans. But here they are both wedge bond, the CH3 and the CH3, they are both, so we call it cis. Now, the same thing goes, let's say we are giving cis plantain amine and we are giving trans plantain amine. So we have the platinum at the center and we have the amine group. So we have the cis, it means the amine, okay, and the chlorine, they are on the same path, whilst here they are not on the same path. Okay. Now we have to understand the difference between cis and trans. So we said cis isomers similar or identical substituent on the same side, and trans isomers similar or identical substituent on opposite sides. Cis isomers often experience steric indians as the group on the same side can be close together. Trans isomers generally experience less steric indians as group on opposite sides are further apart. Cis isomers often have lower melting point and boiling point in the molecular force, and while trans, the same, the opposite, have higher melting point and boiling point because of the reduced intermolecular forces, and so on. Now we have to understand optical enantiomers. We have to explain this one deeply in stereochemistry. Stereochemistry. Now we're talking about optical isomers. We talk about enantiomers. They are mirror images. If you have your two fingers like this. If you observe that the right finger is a, is a mirror of your left finger, but we said they are superimposable. It means they can never be fixed. If you look this one, they can never be fixed. Okay, so we have to understand that we have the S, the L, and we have the R. Okay, when we talk about L, okay, it means it's the left hand, whilst the R, it means it rotates on the right hand. Okay. Now, we have to understand chirality. Whenever you have the word chiral, it means when a central atom, carbon, has different attached to four different elements or compounds with different at, uh, atomic number, we said, or different mass numbers. In the sense, for example, if you check at this one, yeah, we have COH, we have hydrogen, we have CH3, we have OH. That means this carbon here is chiral. We have OH, we have COH, we have H, and we have CH3. It means this carbon here is also chiral. 
And if you check keenly, we said they are male. They are male to each other. Okay, so not the point. This one is a D. Okay, sometimes we describe this one when you talk about in carbohydrate. We say when the OH on the right, we call it D. When the OH on the left, we call it what? L. Okay, so not the point. We have to understand the mirror images in details. So I think we stop here. Yeah, we move on to non superimposable mirror images. So when we talk about non superimposable mirror images, we call, we said, Enantiomers are mirror image of each other but cannot be superimposable. The non superimposable uh, is a result of their chiral natures. Now, not the point, we have to understand the plane of symmetry. This one here is superimposable to this one, so it is a chiral, it is not chiral center. While this one and this part, they are not the same, so it means it is chiral. 